The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Good day students and welcome to another lesson in history for the upper six class. I am your teacher, Chamaze Arnold Akepu. In our previous lesson, we were looking at the factors that militated, the factors that contributed, the factor that inspired, that instilled, that fueled the spirit of nationalism amongst the Algerians, especially the Arabs and the Berbers. Today, we will be looking at the decolonization process. But before we get there, let us have a correction of the assignment, the homework we had, the take home assignment of the last lesson, which was to identify and name, to identify and name two or three personalities who worked for nationalism in Algeria, who militated, who labored for our nationalism in Algeria. In this case, we had people like Ahmed Ben Bella. We had Jamila Buhal. Surprising, in the Arab world, a woman could militate for nationalism, could work for nationalism. That brings the aspect of gender in the history of African nationalism. In our second lesson, which is the decolonization of Algeria, the second part of our lesson, which is the decolonization of Algeria and the role of the role played by Ben Bella, Ahmed Ben Bella, in the rights of nationalism in or in the decolonization process in Algeria. This is what we will be looking at today, the decolonization of Algeria and the role played by Ahmed Ben Bella. For this lesson, we will have as objectives, previous knowledge, situation in real life, learning activities, application exercises, and another homework. The resources you will mobilize through studies in the decolonization process of Algeria will help you to analyze the decolonization of Algeria. The resources will equally empower you to effectively discuss the role played by Ahmed Ben Bella in the rise of or in the decolonization process in Algeria. In our previous lesson, we focused on the factors that militated for the rise of nationalism in Algeria. That notwithstanding, within your school milieu, every academic year, you follow campaign activities for school prefects in, within the school milieu. Could lessons in nationalism and democratic practices, the putting in place of school governance, enable you to effectively understand your lessons on decolonization. In this respect, let us consider this situation in real life. Student toilets in school are defective. 
no running water. But the current school government, school prefects, are reluctant to take this situation to their resp respective quarters for it to be resolved. This creates problems amongst you, the students in school. What action can you, what action will you take to address this leadership crisis in your school milieu? In other words, what actions were taken by Algerian nationalists to address the crisis of leadership, that is, colonial administration? The outcomes of this lesson, therefore, will be that you will active, be able to actively participate in school activities. You will be able to elect competent student representatives. You will be able to advocate. You will advocate for the protection of students' rights, in other words, human rights in the school milieu and in the community as well as the protection of rights of the different people, minorities and others within your school milieu. Like in Algeria, we had the Arabs, the Berbers, the Colons. How were their rights protected? How did failure to protect their rights result to conflicts which brought about the struggle, the fight for nationalism in Algeria? To begin with, the decolonization process in Algeria took the form of a war, and this war became known as the Algerian War of Independence, which took place from 1954 to 1962. In 1948, the secret organization was formed to take over Algeria from the colons who had dominated administrative, political, and other activities in Algeria. This was championed by Ahmed Ben Bella, and he mobilized the Second World War veterans who came together and formed the Organisation Secret, or the Secret Organization, which, whose aim was to fight for the liberation of Algeria from the grip of the colons. By 1954, the Organisation Secrète was transformed to the Front de Libération Nationale, that is, the National Liberation Front of Algeria, still headed by Ahmed Ben Bella. Here we see how a movement of ex-service men, Second World War veterans, transforms itself to a militant political movement, National Liberation Front in Algeria, headed by Ahmed Ben Bella. And a political movement has an obje has objective to take over power. Thus, the objective of the National Liberation Front was to take over or to fight for the independence of Algeria. Furthermore, between November 1954 and 1957, the National Liberation Front organized several revolts in Algeria. As a result of this, over 70 colons and Algerian Muslims who were sympathizers with the colons were killed by France, by a French battalion of over 150,000 soldiers. That is to tell you that it was a situation of war. That is, over 70 colons and Algerian Muslims who sympathized were killed during this situation by what? The National Liberation Front. They were attacked by the National Liberation Front because they sympathized with the colonial government. And the response of, to this was a mobilization of about 150,000 French soldiers. And this became known as the Algerian, the Algerian War of Independence. By 1957, Ahmed Ben Bella was captured and imprisoned. 
That notwithstanding, the struggle didn't end there. By May 1958, the National Liberation Front, Front clashed again with the French colonial army. This resulted to the fall of the, or to a rise of Charles de Gaulle to power in France. This encouraged the rise of Charles de Gaulle in France. This encouraged the rise of, perhaps I should call like a Frenchman, Charles de Gaulle. This encouraged the rise of Charles de Gaulle in France. In October 1958, the French president, Charles de Gaulle, reacted by granting massive economic aid to the to Algeria. He even went as far as granting pardon to National Liberation Front militants who decided or who accepted to surrender and to lay down their arms. He went further to grant political equality with, between the Muslims, the Berbers, and the Colons. Thus, as a result of the Algerian War of Independence, political equality was restored in Algeria. In October 1958, the Gaul, as we earlier said, massively granted economic aid to the Algerians, pardon to members of the Liberation Front who surrendered, political equality between the French and the Arabs. And this promoted, a meet, this resulted to a meeting of the Algerian nationalists who met in Tangier, in, who met in Tangier and fought a government in exile. And decided to form a government in exile. This government in exile was supported by countries like Morocco and Tunisia. Remember, these were northeastern countries to Algeria, to Algeria, and these countries formed the pan-Islamic movement and had solidarity with Algeria, which was struggling for their independence, and thus supported the nationalist struggle in Algeria, either physically, financially, or even morally. In September 1959, self-government was promised to the Algerians. Self-government was promised to the Algerians. Even though equality had been granted to the Colons and the Algerians, the Colons reacted negatively to the promise of self-government to the Algerians. And this resulted to the fall of Charles de Gaulle. He came up through a crisis and another crisis was bringing him down. However, the policies put in place by the goal, moving Algeria towards independence, showed the leadership qualities of Charles de Gaulle, which, re which, which reverberated not only in Algeria, but in the whole of French colonial Africa, which experienced policies put in place by Charles de Gaulle, resulting to self-determination in French colonies in Africa. The Algerians brought pressure to bear on the French government, which put in place further policies in preparation for the independence of Algeria. By 1961, the French government engaged in dialogue, mediation, discussions with the Algerian government in exile, looking for possible solutions for a truce, for a ceasefire, and to prepare the grounds for eventual independence of Algeria. Remember, we are talking of a situation of war. We are talking of the Algerian War of Independence. In March 1962, a meeting was finally organized with the National Liberation Front leaders. This meeting brought about the signing of the Avian Accord, which took place on the 18th of March, 
1962 in Avien-le-Bain. This brought about a ceasefire and it was decided that a referendum would be organized in Algeria on the question of independence. Algerians were therefore called upon to vote for their independence. By July 1962, preparations for the referendum were ongoing. On the 1st of July 1962, the referendum was organized. Effective results were proclaimed in on the 3rd of July 1962, which granted independence to Algeria and Ahmed Ben Bella became the first president of the Republic of Algeria. Of the Republic of Algeria. In this respect, we begin to ask ourselves, what role, what was the role played by Ahmed Ben Bella in the rise of nationalism in Algeria? What role was played by Ahmed Ben Bella in the rise of nationalism in Algeria? The first aspect we will begin with was the military role played by Ahmed Ben Bella. We will also look at the creation of a revolutionary party, his political education to the masses, the, his organization of a war against France and border raids, his lobbying for foreign assistance from the countries of the Maghreb, his participation in internal international conferences, as well as dialogue and negotiations with the government of the Gaul. To begin with, military formation. Ahmed Ben Bella was the brain behind the formation of the Organisation Secret. This organization attacked the Central Post Office in 1949 and took the sum of 3 million French francs. They committed a lot of acts of atrocity and arson. Most of their leaders went to jail and succeeded in escaping to Cairo, where they formed the Revolutionary Committee. And it was as a result of this that they established a military base at Ore Constante in a military base in Ore Constante. Furthermore, Ahmed Ben Bella championed the creation of a political party, a revolutionary political party. That was the National Liberation Front for Algeria in 1954. This party was supported by Abdel Nasser of Egypt. Remember the role of Abdel Nasser in the Suez Canal crisis, which encouraged which instilled, which equally militated for the rise of nationalism in Algeria. Ahmed Ben Bella was greatly inspired by the defeat of France at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in Indochina between 1954 and 1955 to set up this revolutionary political party to equally fight against French domination in Algeria. That notwithstanding, we thought of political education. Ahmed Ben Bella was a good orator. He was a good public speaker. These are some quotes of a good leader. Remember, you were called upon to elect school leaders, school prefects. What kind of leaders will you elect? Certainly, those with good skills in public speaking, oratory, those who are well-educated, who perform well in their education. 
right? Like Ahmed Ben Bella, who was a good public speaker, he was a good orator, and he was politically very enlightened, very educated. And he helped to educate Algerians about the economic exploitation of France, of the colons on Algeria. The organization of war against France and border raids was another major contribution of Ahmed Ben Bella to the declaration process in Algeria. He organized wars against France around the Ore Mountain, where he had his major military bases. He equally organized border raids across Tunisia, Morocco, and Algeria. Remember, the courts of the Maghreb throw their support behind Ahmed Ben Bella because they had much in common. They had much they shared together in terms of what? Islamic culture. And they were all members of the pan-Islamic movements. Furthermore, Ahmed Ben Bella contributed very enormously in mobilizing financial mil and military assistance to in the struggle for decolonization in Algeria. He mobilized financially and he also contacted countries like Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Russia, Germany and China who all were anti-colonial powers and provided aid or assistance to Algeria to fight against the French colonial masters. Equally, the Algerian guerrillas or the militants, the soldiers of the National Liberation Front, some of them were trained in Egypt and others in East Germany. This helped to empower them on war tactics and this enabled these soldiers to effectively fight for the independence of Algeria. In another perspective, Ahmed Ben Bella took part in several conferences and negotiations which preceded or prepared the grounds for independence in Algeria. He took part in several pan-Arabic conferences, the non-aligned movement, and pan-African conferences. Remember, the various conferences organized by Nkrumah after the independence of Ghana in Accra, most of them were attended by Ahmed Ben Bella. He was also part of the Afro-Asian Bandu Conference of 1955. He attended without a delegate status. That is to tell you the zeal that was burning in Ahmed, Ahmed Ben Bella to drive out the French from Algeria. In April 1958, like we already said, all African independent states conference in Accra, Ghana, was attended by Ahmed Ben Bella, as well as the Tanya conference in Morocco. These were conferences all attended by Abed Ben Bella, that is the Tangier Conference in Morocco. Still in 1958, Ahmed Ben Bella entered a series of negotiations with the French government, which finally mounted up to the independence of Algeria following a referendum. These were the various contributions made by Ahmed Ben Bella to the rise of nationalism in Algeria. During this lesson, we saw the formation of the National Liberation Front. We saw how this National Liberation Front engaged in a fierce war of independence with the French colonial army. We saw the granting of pardon to militants who accepted to surrender by the French government. We saw a French government looking at the situation of the crisis, accepting to prepare the way for independence in Algeria. 
Their willingness to meet and negotiate with the liberation leaders in exile, the signing of the Avian Accord and the proclamation of independence, as well as the various contributions of Ahmed Ben Bella in terms of his militantism, in terms of his mobilization of resources, in terms of his training of Algerian soldiers, in terms of negotiation and attending of conferences to empower himself and to share these practices, best practices gathered during these conferences with the Algerian masses and to educate them on the exploitation tendencies of the colons in Algeria. This in summary, constituted the decolonization process in Algeria, as well as the role of Ahmed Ben Bella in the decolonization of Algeria. In our next lesson, it will be your duty, in preparation of our next lesson, it will be your duty to identify and discuss the reasons for the late takeoff of nationalism in Angola. Remember, we have seen nationalism in British West Africa. We have seen nationalism in French colonial Africa. And we are left with Portuguese Africa. So as homework, you will identify and discuss the reasons you identify so that we will be able to discuss the factors, the reasons that militated, that retarded, that obstructed the rise of nationalism in Angola. That is to tell you that nationalism in Angola didn't begin as elsewhere in Africa. For this lesson, we mobilize resources from the Advanced Level History Pathfinder, the Masterpiece, which is a complete course in Advanced Level History, as well as some web sources like Getty Images, Le Parisien, and Statico 1.me. These are some of the resources we consulted in putting together this lesson for you. Thank you and see you in our next lesson which will focus on nationalism in Angola, that is in Portuguese Africa. The Portuguese were the first to come and they were the last to leave. Why were they the last to leave? That is the focus of the homework you have. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 